Welcome back to another university segment. My name is Tyler Olson. I am the university program director here at Mouse Belt, and I have with me some of the members of the blockchain club at Fordham University. You guys want to introduce yourselves really quick? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having us here, Tyler. I'm Peter, and I'm the president at Blockchain at Fordham. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, my name's John. I'm the treasurer at Blockchain at Fordham, and I'm the newest eboard member. Hi, thanks for having us. I'm Kieran. I'm the co-president of Blockchain at Fordham, and I'm currently a sophomore. And hello, I am Spencer. I am head of research and development for Blockchain at Fordham. Great, you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah no, um, thank you all for taking some time out of your day to hop on a call and um, entertain a couple of my questions. Um, you know, one thing that I've noticed as I go deeper down the blockchain and um, crypto rabbit hole is that you find a lot of different people here. And I think that's in large part because there's a lot of different aspects to what's going on here that might attract someone initially. You know, you have your sort of tech oriented people, you have a lot of um, anarcho capitalists that are really just into the idea of um, reinventing free markets and 24 um, hour markets and things like that. And then you have um, some people that are um, just, you know, looking to uh, sort of um, capitalize on a new developing industry. So I'd like each of you to say a little bit about your background and how you got into crypto and blockchain and what your interests are there. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I think that's the most exciting part about this industry is there's all different types of people. Um, it's not just, you know, one industry that's dominating. It's, it's really across multiple. Um, so like I got into blockchain, I think like a lot of people with the, you know, the whole ICO craze, Bitcoin is about to hit 20,000. It was really exciting. And at the time I was a finance major, so I thought I was smarter than everyone else. I could, I could play the markets a little bit. And so I started to play around with Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of the altcoins. Um, and then when everything crashed, I think like everyone else, I realized that I wasn't a genius. Um, and so I said, okay, I'm not going to play around with this stuff anymore until I actually learn about the technology. Because I was just like many other people riding on the hype. Um, so I sold everything and I bought Mastering Bitcoin. And then it sat on my dresser for a couple weeks and a couple months. And then I had an internship over the summer. I was doing uh, IT risk at a consulting company and it was super boring. And so I started to read Mastering Bitcoin. I was reading on my commute. I was reading it when my boss wasn't looking. And I just kind of fell in love with the technology aspect of it. And I realized that I didn't want to do finance. I actually wanted to do stuff in technology. That's really where my passion uh, lied. So then once I started learning more about blockchain and all the different applications and use cases, um, I realized that so many kids at Fordham, their jobs were going to be impacted or they're potentially going to be using some sort of blockchain system in the future. So I really wanted to bring it to the school. So in the winter of 2019, um, uh, around like January 2019, I started the blockchain club. Um, and my goal has just been to try to educate the Fordham community as much as possible with you know, everything blockchain from the crypto side to the finance side to really everything in between. So um, kind of similar to Peter, I was a senior in high school during the whole ICO craze. And uh, I actually never trade cryptocurrencies, but two of my best friends were. And um, we'd constantly be having discussions whether cryptocurrencies could be considered real currencies. You know, they're not backed by a central bank, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was interested in it, but I didn't really trust it enough to invest in it myself. And then um, fast forward, I was a freshman at Fordham and I got that first email from Peter um, saying, you know, he'd started this new club, the blockchain club. And I'd been interested in the technology side of it, kind of learning about what these cryptocurrencies are based on. Um, so that I could look at it more from an investment perspective. And that's when I um, joined the Blockchain Club. And I've, you know, been a, a good member of the club. I've been to all the events and just kept learning a lot. 
Oh uh, yeah, so I would say that I kind of got into it uh, coming from my background. I was very interested in financial services. So I was actually in a ton of different business clubs back in high school. And I was doing one of the mock like stock market simulators and it was all the craze that year and everybody was kind of freaking out talking about it. And that's kind of what piqued my interest. But then I learned that it was so much more. When I went off to school, I decided I did like financial services. So I was going to major in finance and concentrate in information systems, financial technology. And as John had also said, Peter had sent out an email and I remember the first club meeting, I went up to him and I was like, how can I get involved and how can I learn more? And now it's been a wonderful experience. We're now partnered up with Mouse Belt, which is a great learning experience to kind of get my foot in the door. And I know that there's so much more that we can do and learn about. So that's what's interesting to me because every day it's something new. So uh, with my background and how I got involved with the club, so uh, I actually, when I first joined the club, really had no knowledge of what blockchain was. Uh, I knew about what cryptocurrency was, but I didn't know about, you know, the technology that ran it. And um, I always had a very strong interest and background in technology ever since I was younger. I would always practice, you know, HTML, any types of software programs, video editing, that type of stuff. So I did have a, a big passion for technology growing up. And then um, when Kieran came back from his first blockchain meeting, he was my, my roommate at the time. And he told me, hey, Spence, like I went to a super cool club, uh, blockchain. And I was like, blockchain, like what's blockchain? So he like kind of explained it to me, knowing about my interest in tech. And uh, ever since then, just the concepts, the technology, the applications of it all just struck me, uh, caught my attention. And ever since then, I've been eager and excited learning about it and engaging in it, taking the mouse belt lessons and courses. And now, now, now I'm a, a big part of the blockchain club. Great. And, you know, I know being in the Bronx, y'all are so close to Wall Street. So y'all are in a lot of ways um, next door to one of the financial meccas of the world. Um, so I could imagine that there is um, in the broader region, a large um, community of people that are at least um, interested in um, dabbling in this, uh, whether good, bad or indifferent. But I wonder what it looks like at Fordham University on the campus. Is there a lot of um, student interest that you find? Um, are y'all doing anything to incentivize non-members to come and learn about all of this stuff? Yeah, so I'll just quickly speak because I, I want to have, you know, Kieran, Spencer, and John to kind of talk more about because they've been this past semester, like boots on the ground, really trying to teach kids about this stuff. But just when I first started the blockchain club, most kids came up to me and was like, we're trying to not, you know, challenge my knowledge of cryptocurrencies and all this different stuff. And I was just trying to like de-escalate the situation and say, listen, listen, blockchain is more than just trading cryptocurrencies and all this stuff. Um, so, you know, I think the sediment at the school, you know, maybe it's changed a little bit. Um, and some of the administrators are a little more, uh, you know, willing to talk about blockchain, but I think at least at our school, it does have quite the stigma with, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And that scares a lot of the people that would potentially help fund our club or, you know, help bring speakers and alumni into it. Um, so, you know, even when I started the club, I was, I was joking with the guys the other day saying how they made me, you know, promised that I wasn't going to use any of the funds to start trading cryptocurrencies. And I was like, listen, listen, I, like, I, I'm just trying to teach kids about blockchain. I'm not trying to like make any personal, you know, gain from the, the money that you fund us. We just want t-shirts. Like it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so yeah, you know, like our school, I think they're coming around to it. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of great organizations like Mousebelt and, you know, Coinbase put out a report of all the different universities that have, you know, been doing things with blockchain technology. And I think seeing a lot of those, you know, like Cornell, Penn, a lot of the, you know, the UC schools being big in blockchain has kind of lit the fire at Fordham of saying like, all right, maybe this is something we should look into. And, you know, there's already a club, so there, there must be some, you know, sort of interest going on. Um, so if the rest of you guys just want to talk about like the stuff we've, you know, how you guys have, have felt about how blockchain is at, at Fordham. So I definitely agree and say that we're, uh, 
you know, finance heavy school. So a lot of the interest I think tends to come from people who are interested in trading cryptos and want to learn more about the technology. But there's, um, as you said earlier, Tyler, you know, we're right next to the heart of New York city and we've, we have a lot of opportunities to kind of get into the city and learn more. Um, this past semester, uh, actually it was in the fall, me and one other member were able to attend the Tezos Global Summit um, in Manhattan. And that was a really awesome learning experience where I, you know, I got to learn more about using blockchain for digitization of physical assets, which was like super interesting to me um, and something I'd never learned about before. So there's just a ton of new learning experiences that we can have based on our location. Yeah, and just adding to that, um, Fordham actually does have a lot of traction because we are a business school. I remember I did, um, in front of our entire freshman class, I did a big speech and kind of like pitch the club kind of thing. And uh, we actually got a big turnout after that because uh, we just started off uh, integrating the Mouse Belt platform for uh, our business with blockchain focus group. So with that, uh, the idea is because we have a ton of finance, business students, and we're so close to Wall Street and everything else, uh, we'll kind of take that interest and bridge the gap between the heavy business students who are more traditional accounting and finance routes and to understand the impacts of technology and to kind of integrate the more computer science people as well. So that's the kind of platform that we've been running and we've actually gotten a huge turnout with that. And it's been very interesting to kind of see the progression and just how many people actually show up. It's really interesting. And, uh... Peter Donner can touch upon all that really well. Uh, so there's not much more I can add, but I can just, I just want to add that through my past year here on the club is um, when I, when this club first started and the attention and the traction for the club was just starting to get the ball rolling and stuff. Um, I noticed that at first I never heard of blockchain until I came into the club and then blockchain became more of a discussion within business as Karen talked about. And even just within my core business classes, like students who uh, weren't involved in the club or weren't even involved in CompSci, uh, began just having discussions in class about, you know, blockchain applications or how, you know, they can cut down an operation uh, uh, variables with, you know, uh, Pfizer just through using blockchain. So there has been discussion and more and more uh, exposure to blockchain on campus um, and as we integrate it with business the turnout uh, within our club has uh, grew exponentially uh, but now I think we're just trying to find ways to you know really show kids uh, within our campus that blockchain isn't just all crypto and you can apply it to uh, multiple facets of, of business. You know it's good to hear that there's a lot of um, overlap or there's um a lot of um, um, communication taking place between those people who are more tech oriented, right? Have a more technical profile and those people that are, you know, interested in finance or business, because I think um, one of the most important aspects to bringing about mass adoption of this technology and of um, cryptocurrencies is having a communicative bridge across the technical landscape and um, the sort of world of use cases or the sort of world of business, right? Because what I've found is that a lot of people who have heard of things like Bitcoin and blockchain tend to feel intimidated because most of what they hear is just a lot of technical jargon where people are talking about all the things that happen under the hood, as it were. But that's really not the case, you know, to actually be a user of something, even like, um, you know, a lot of these DeFi, these decentralized finance platforms, it's actually quite simple and intuitive, you know. But I get it that it seems like there's just, you know, a myriad of applications out there and, you know, it looks like there's a lot of moving parts and, you know, like what the hell is it to even um, 
you know, take out a collateralized debt position, you know, like, where do I find this, right? What website do I go, da, 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 da. And, you know, a large part of that is true that there is, you know, um, a little bit of a learning curve and, you know, there's a lot of um, being in the know that goes into actually uh, being aware of um, where you can find these things, but um, it's getting better and better. And, you know, I think that that's in large part due to how um, people are figuring out better and better ways to communicate um, across those um, worlds. How about any projects that y'all are working on right now? Is there anything in the works, anything that y'all have been working on? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I think what, what you had said previously is, is perfect that, you know, a lot of people get overwhelmed by the technical aspect of, of blockchain and Bitcoin and, and really a lot of aspects of the industry. And, you know, when I started out the club in, in 2019, I thought that, you know, I was going to do one day on Bitcoin, one day on Ethereum, one day on this. And when I started to make the presentation for Bitcoin and the other one for Ethereum, I was like, this is like a 70 slide long PowerPoint. Like no one's going to be able to pay attention to this, you know, and I tried to present it. And I, you know, I think Kira might've been at that first meeting and it was like an hour plus long. I was like, A, no one has the attention span for this. And B, there's no way I try to do this every other week. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, with the help of the Crossbell course, you know, Kieran talk more, they've been leading it. Um, it's really helped us break down, you know, the different aspects that kids care most about. Because at the end of the day, as long as you have some sort of idea of what the technology is, you know, how it's running and a little bit of, of how it works, you don't have to know the math. You know, I don't know elliptical curve, you know, multiplication, anything like that. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to talk a little bit more about your experience about doing the mousepad course, um, and John, you can also, since this past semester, you've been coming, uh, to the meetings and, and seeing Kieran and Spencer talk about, you know, the different aspects. Maybe you can also talk about your experience of just being a participant. Uh, yeah, so, um, kind of like Peter said, our club has mostly been educational and, um, at the beginning of this year, I got the opportunity to present something that I had actually been researching a bit on with Peter. Um, like I said, I'm interested in the use cases, bridging the gap between like finance, accounting, and um, the blockchain technology. And I was able to present to our club about uh, zero knowledge proofs and how accounting, different big accounting firms are using zero knowledge proofs um, into their new projects to create, you know, complete transparency or, um, and whatnot. And that was like an interesting, uh, experience on the teaching side, because I think that's a lot more of what we do now with the mouse belt, uh, courses. Yeah. Um, just kind of adding to that, uh, because me and Spencer did kind of coordinate the curriculum together. A lot of what we do focus on, as I had mentioned earlier, because many of our students are business students, are those kinds of uh, the applications for careers. So we kind of introduce them to a lot of different things through the course, like how does blockchain get integrated during like advisory? Like what, for example, like what is technology advisory? Uh, like financial transformations, things in that nature that we can kind of, a lot of like your traditional finance students may think that stuff is very interesting but they just don't really get to hear about that in their normal intro to finance class. So we kind of go about it like that and just kind of giving people the fundamental understanding of what the technology is and how they could use it in their careers and how their industries are being shaped. That stuff, you can tell, everybody's really interested in kind of seeing how, oh, wow, this really cool new thing. How's it gonna disrupt what has been happening for over a hundred years? So that's kind of the great thing about blockchain in general, and I'm sure Spencer can want to talk a bit more about what we do in the kind of decks that we run, but that's kind of the interest of our group. Yes, yeah, so uh, with what Karen and I were doing uh, with the club, uh, every week, uh, him and I would put together a slide deck of 
whatever it is we thought was interesting or applicable to the club based off what we learned through the mouse belt course. So Karen and I were simultaneously taking the online mouse belt course together. And as we were taking this course, we would, you know, take some important info, some key concepts, or uh, just some interesting resources that you guys had and share that with our club, try to explain it and maybe uh, in a, a more consolidated format for the club, maybe explain it uh, or answer questions that they may have that, you know, isn't answered within the course or, or whatnot. But uh, Karen and I would put together little 20 to 30 minute slide decks where um, we could explain uh, just the foundation of blockchain. What is it? How does it work? Explaining it to business students who really don't have an idea of what blockchain is. Then uh, how to implement blockchain using, say, your business strategy, you know, the building blocks you need in order to start implementing blockchain, see where it can help you. Uh, or even see where it can help you and try to avoid that or hurt you and try to avoid that. So uh, Karen and I went into a bunch of different aspects of blockchain within business. And that's kind of the course that we were trying to lead is trying to connect the two um, until that, you know, uh, sadly got cut short through, you know, the coronavirus pandemic. But uh, that's what uh, him and I, that's a project we were working on and had going with the club. Awesome. Thank you for sharing some of that with us, guys. Um, we're starting to run out of time here, so I want to leave you with one final question. You know, it's been a really interesting year so far. We're not even halfway through 2020, and a lot has happened. Um, how do you see the future unfolding from this point onward? How do you want to reimagine 2020? Well, just a Definitely is joining the club. I think it's going to be something that hopefully the school starts talking more about. I mean, I've been making a push to try to have them, you know, have an actual class on blockchain because I think it would definitely be needed. But, you know, I, I just think being in New York, uh, we're able to take, you know, we're able to use all the opportunities of the events and offices that are based there. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, a lot of these companies keep up their online webinars and I think that'll be able to have a lot of students in our clubs have access to these people that are actually building blockchain applications and kind of break down that barrier of, you know, I don't know anything about blockchain. I can't get involved with, in it because, you know, John, Kieran and Spencer are all perfect examples of kids that came into the club that really didn't know much. And now, you know, they're running the club next year and I have complete faith in them that they're going to, you know, they're going to absolutely kill it. So that's how I reimagined 2020. Uh, I think 2020 is going to be a learning experience for all of us if the first half of 2020 has shown us anything, but um, we all have a lot more time on our hands now. Um, and so I'm hoping that, you know, our club will keep meeting. Um, well, I know we will keep meeting um, in, you know, Zoom style formats like this and um, just to keep learning throughout the rest of the year, you know, even though we're not there physically. There are tons of webinars and stuff online, like Peter was saying, tons of opportunities just to keep learning. Yeah, I would say just um, with the, in light of everything that's happening around the world in the current moment, um, blockchain is just one kind of example where technology is impacting everything that we're doing. Like we're doing this in a Zoom format, for example, like just kind of the reinvigoration and emphasis on kind of how technology plays into things that you may not even realize and kind of learn about and just kind of get the interest where I go, okay, like, how does this play in my daily life? How will this change my career? Like, what can I do to get more involved and be more like, uh, get more digital acumen? So things like that, that's how we would go about reimagining 2020. Um, I reimagine 2020, hopefully, you know, in the most positive light, you know, with us returning to school in the fall. But uh, even if that isn't the case, whether we return to school or not, uh, I reimagine 2020 with this club coming together, um, us expanding within our, our uh, within the school. I plan on also within this 2020, uh, continuing the courses that we started within the club, really educating the kids in here who may not know about blockchain as well. And uh, make sure that once they're more engaged and we got that founding block of, you know, that, that blockchain club, we can go out into the city, you know, really take advantage of the resources we have. In New York City, go out to some conventions, some seminars, some talks about blockchain and um, 
that's how I reimagine 2020. Well, there you have it, folks. Education is on the rise at Fordham. Blockchain at Fordham. Peter, John, Kieran, Spencer, thank you guys again for taking some time to hop on this call, man. Thank Thanks you so much, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. You're tuned in to Reimagine 2020. Stay tuned to learn more about the state of the art in blockchain education and technological development all around the world. Reimagine 2020.